Today's episode is sponsored by Care Of. Care Of, you already know what it is because I talk about it almost every single week. It is a subscription service that ships high quality, personalized vitamins, supplements, and powders conveniently to your door every single month. Care Of also helps track your wellness progress through their thoughtfully designed companion app. For 50% off your first Care Of order, go to takecareof.com and enter code BCC50. For 50% off your first Care Of order, go to takecareof.com and enter code BCC50. That's BCC50. Skims is creating the next generation of underwear for everybody. I personally like their boy shorts because, as a lot of you know, I don't wear thongs anymore. So I seriously, seriously recommend them. The Fits Everybody collection of underwear is super lightweight and molds to your body. The buttery soft fabric stretches to twice its size without ever losing shape. Believe the hype, Skims has over 100,000 five-star reviews for a reason. The Fits Everybody collection and more perfect fit essentials are available now at skims.com. Plus, get free shipping on orders over $75. After you place your order, Order, be sure to let them know we sent you. Select podcast in the survey and be sure to select our show in the drop down menu that follows. That show being the BCC Club. ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top rated patient reviewed doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones who take your insurance, are located near you, and treat almost any condition you're searching for or you currently have. I currently have three doctors through ZocDoc. I have my therapist, my psychiatrist, and my general doctor who's been getting me blood pressure medication, and stuff for my, my sugar levels. So I, I truly recommend ZocDoc. So go to ZocDoc.com slash BCC and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash BCC. ZocDoc.com slash BCC. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the chain. chain. We are your hosts. I'm Kendall Landreth. And I'm Sarah Shower. And this is the BCC Club where each week we what? We, uh, Sarah, every single week we pick a new topic on the internet. And we go down a little rabbit hole like two little bunnies. That's insane. Go down the rabbit hole like two little small bunnies. And uh-huh. we, we look at all this stuff about it and we talk about it. And we burrow. And then people mow over us. And yeah. we're scared to resurface. And then we come out and somebody shoots us. They put us we put they put our little legs on a keychain. Yeah. Every and our, single Wednesday. But it's so lucky. Yeah. yeah. It's so like your little toes are so lucky. Mm-hmm. Every single Wednesday we do that. Um, and this week mm-hmm. we're talking about people. People who live on cruises. Yeah. This is real. And yeah. I'm thinking about doing it. Mm-hmm. You really? Um, not really, but it, when I'm older, I would I would think about doing it. Not forever, but like for oh, yeah. six months, I would do it. Yeah, I would live in like a, a, just a really big RV. Like two stories, like double-decker RV. Yeah, but I mean, if you're going to do that, you might as well just cruise because then you're given like unlimited food. I can't stand the ocean. Then don't do it. That's what I'll tell you. The ocean is yeah. a huge part of the experience. I know. A big part of it. Yes. Before we get into that, though, sir, how was your week? Good. Um, what did I do? I had a stand-up show yesterday. It went really well. I met a lot of fans who are super nice, um, and I really enjoyed and them talking to me. It was so cool. And um, I, God, I wish I could tell this story, but I can't because it's, alcohol related um it's not i didn't drink it was just AA related okay oh, um <laughs> that must be the worst for a comedian you're I like know, it was boy like- do i have good stories <laughs> about all of you it was funny um and then uh uh last week i did my uh hollywood improv show how'd it go it was it was really good it was definitely like an audience that was like the people in the audience were there for like a certain comedian and so I was like, there's my guys in mm-hmm. this weird L and then that clump back there. Yeah. So I just got like the most mixed laughter. Yeah. But yeah. Thank you guys for coming. And how was your oh, week? So it was good. It was a good it was a good week. Today's my dog's gotcha day. What? Her gotcha day. It's when she was adopted. Oh. So she was adopted 
I don't know how many years ago, but five years ago maybe. Yeah. And oh. she's perfect. So today, after we record, my girlfriend and I are going to go get her uh, Mc- some McDonald's fries. <laughs> I thought you were saying you are going to give her back. We were, we were like, oh, great. Five years, we're done. Thank you so much. <laughs> gotcha. You don't live with us anymore. <laughs> yeah, gotcha is the day we prank our dog and we take her back to the pound. Now we're going to get her a fry from McDonald's. She can't really get a full bucket of fries, but we give her one. Yeah. She gets she loves fries so much. Oh, that's so sweet. So I'm very excited. Um, yeah, she's the love of my life. So if you're listening, Angel... Happy birthday. Oh, Angel. We don't really know how old she is. You don't? No. Because we got her when she was six. Oh, she's yeah. She's an elderly dog. So now she's probably 11. Oh, yeah. I, it's hard to tell. My girlfriend, I was like, you got to stop saying she's eight. You've been saying she's eight for like six years. But yeah. I think we both just don't want to like process that she's getting older. So we just keep saying she's eight years old. But she's not. She's probably 11 years old now. Yeah. Dopey's birthday is January 10th of 2012. So he just oh turned. Oh, my God. 11. Oh, my God. Old. Well, no, cats hey. live a long time. Sorry. Dopey's going to live forever. Oh, yeah. He's oh, got the... <laughs> what is that? Water. Also, I have a sunburn. Oh, I thought that was a time. massive booger. I was like, no. Kendall. No, I just hit my nose and then this it's fell. It's the bottle cap. Sorry. I, it was just so, like, <laughs> white and it... I was like, it fell. No, no. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Ew, that would be so... No, I would be so embarrassed if that happened. I actually hate, like, my snotting. Yeah. You know, when you're, like, talking and you snot. It's like, when I do that, I think about it for weeks after, even if it happens in front of like my partner. Yeah. It's so embarrassing to me. Yeah. If someone else does it, I like don't care. But I do feel like if someone else does it, I panic so hard to try to make sure they feel like I didn't see it. Oh, where yeah. I'm like, look at that over there. Like I get so panicked because I don't want them to think anyone saw it. Um, and it's really probably not even that embarrassing. It happens to everybody. In college, I um, w- walked from my freshman dorm, like, down the elevator to the gym. And while I was going down the elevator, these two guys who were, like, super popular at the time were in the elevator. And I was in my gym clothes. And I looked really cute. So I was like, oh, they're looking at me because yeah. I look really cute. I get to the gym, and I have, like, a massive, like, t- at le- like a massive booger stuck <gasps> to the tip of my nose. Like, two eraser, like, pencil eraser size booger. What the hell? And it's just, like, stuck to the tip of my nose. <laughs> And oh. I walked to the gym and I checked in like that. And they didn't say anything? No, but I mean, they were looking at say? me and I was like, I, I did used to wear like makeup to the gym and I was very like blonde and like tiny. And You're I was like, I'm, like hot. I'm like, I'm so cute. Just massive. Man. Booger on the tip of my nose. That's disgusting, Sarah. It's okay. It's just, no, not to me. It's it, not okay. It, it made Don't me gay. <laughs> <laughs> well, probably made them gay. Oh my God. That elevator was transformative. Yeah. What elevator? The one that we all took to the gym. <laughs> oh, oh, elevator at your well, gym. Well, elevator to go downstairs and then we... Oh, yeah. fa- you go to a fancy gym. Well, it was just outside. Your gym is outside? <laughs> you had to walk from the dorm to the gym. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I didn't go to college, so I do not understand. Was your gym in the same building as your... I didn't go to college. In, in your high school. Was your gym in the same building as your... Oh, okay, Sarah, my listening skills have been horrible during this. <laughs> I thought you were talking about like a crunch gym. What? Like a crunch gym? Like a, like a, like only Equinox? abs? No, like <laughs> crunch the brand of gym. Do you know what that is? Crunch, there's like Equinox, there's like 24 hour <laughs> fitness. What? No. You don't know any of those? I No, I don't know Crunch. Oh, it's just <laughs> the name of my gym. It's Crunch. I was just imagining like a gym you would buy a membership to. I'm realizing it was your school gym. My schools were outside. Like my high school was outside. Yeah. This is probably what you're explaining. Uh huh. Like your gym was like like those ones like those <laughs> beach gyms like in Santa Monica where like that was like all this stuff was inside but the hallways were outside. Oh yeah, because you're That's from California. You're, yeah, California. Yeah, California baby. You're from NoHo. Yeah. Nor NoCal. No NorCal. Yeah. NoHo's Northern Hollywood, but yeah, I'm from Northern California. Um, and. Northern California is really close to Seattle. Uh-huh. If you think eight hours is like close, then it's really close to Seattle. If you have like no <laughs> understanding of geography, <laughs> then it's really close. Yeah. And there's a lot of what ports in Seattle? Cruise ship ports. Good. Yes, there you know are. What also launches from a lo- like a lot of California ports. What? Cruise ships. <laughs> I don't, is that true? My parents are going on a cruise ship out of San Diego this Well, uh, that would have been an easier <laughs> transition. <laughs> you know it's eight hours away from the state. That, yeah. No, I, but I, yeah, there are a lot of cruises from Seattle. I only know that because I've only been on one cruise and it left out of Seattle. I've been on cruises that, uh, Disney cruises that left Florida. <gasps> yeah. I know my girlfriend's from Florida and they, they're, it's like cruise ports are like the whole yeah. thing there. There's just so many people there for cruises. Yeah. The best part about Florida is leaving. Yeah, getting on a boat and going With away. several others. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
Have you? So you've been on a cruise? Yes, I've been on a Disney cruise. Is that the only one you've been on? I've been on two Disney cruises back to back. Would you recommend? Um, the kids. I went in the kids club each time, and it was really fun. I didn't. Um, sure. I mean, yeah. If you're a kid, if yeah. you're like 13 listening to this, yeah, go on a Disney cruise with your family. Yeah, I've always like thought about going on a Disney cruise, even though I like don't really care about Disney, but it just seems really fun. I just went on an Alaskan cruise. Yeah, which is really fun. But it's not like a, uh, it's like an adult, it's a very adult cruise. Yeah. Like you're, you're not, they don't have a bunch of pools. It's also mm-hmm. in Alaska. So there's not a lot of like sunbathing that's happening. Yeah. It's a lot of like, oh, let's go to the mojito bar and chat in our like fancy outfits mm-hmm. while we go to Alaska. Like it's a little more upscale. Mm-hmm. Upscale is the wrong word. But yeah. it's like, it's not like you're all running around in your flip flops and stuff. Yeah, um, we needed tokens to get dinner. So <laughs> yeah, that we wasn't like that. Yeah, but it was very, it was very fun. Yeah, it was very, very fun. But it was like expensive. So I think during this, I kept being like, "How are people doing this for six months at a time?" But apparently, there's some really cheap cruises. But you got to be careful when you're signing up for a cruise because I've heard people are like, "You see it all the time with Spirit Airlines." Like on yeah. TikTok, people will be like, "Travel hack. Did you know you can get a ticket to?" Uh, Tokyo for $13 and yeah. it's like yeah don't take that flight oh yeah because you're gonna you're be never gonna get there and also um, that's not the expense that's like people I feel like think that traveling the expensive part is the flight and it's like it's definitely one part of it yeah. but like once you get there you have to like pay for hotels and food mm-hmm. and t- you have to take off work and you have to do all of this stuff that's the expensive yeah. part don't take a $13 flight somewhere oh no very dangerous absolutely not but there we're gonna talk about living full time on a cruise ship you know some cruise lines are fully residential, offer multi-year leases. The MV Narrative is an upscale residential ship currently being built by Storylines. It has more than 500 private rooms and apartments. There Ooh. will be 11 types of residents on board, with the largest global at 1,970 square feet, uh, one, two levels with up to four bedrooms, two bathrooms, a large balcony, a dining room that seats six, and a walk-in closet. And Whoa. The, oh, nice. The ship comes with medical services, a farmer's market. A 10,000 square foot gym and spa open 24 hours a day, three swimming pools, a 24 hour room service, a co working space, a spa, a school, a library, a bank, 20 restaurants, a theater for performance and movies, and children can attend the ship's world schooling program, which wow. blends. Yeah, that's really nice. Wow. It's so crazy because I also think I have to keep reminding myself like how expensive retirement homes are, like quality yeah. retirement homes is so, from what I've heard, mm-hmm. like the most expensive thing on planet Earth. Yeah. So I think to me, I'm like, well, if rent's in, rent in LA is like $1,000 a month, this can't be affordable. But yeah. people are paying, I mean, millions of dollars to get their parents like adequate care. Oh, yeah. Which is so insane. So it is like, yeah, they've got everything on yeah. this boat. They really do. And um, I was looking into this. You can have a, a there's a lot of AA meetings on boats as well. Mm. But if it's in the programming, they don't say AA because they don't want to have a, a negative connotation. So they call it a friend of Gary meeting. So if you ever see that on a cruise ship itinerary, it's an AA meeting. Oh, so the people who would... Like, alcoholics are just supposed to know that's what that means. Yeah, because the founder of AA, like, uh, uh, people who go to AA know who friend of Gary, what friend of Gary means. Oh. And so um, since there's, they, it's also a collective meeting where if you're an NA or Overeaters Anonymous, you can also join because it's like a cruise ship and there's not going to be, like, individual mm-hmm. things. So if you see that on a cruise ship itinerary, that's what that is. Wow. Yeah, I loved, we, on the cruise we had, there was, like, gay hour. Like, for all the LGBT mm-hmm. people on the boat, there was, like, there was a... Meet up every night for people. Sorry to burp. Okay. Ew. It's over. Ew. Uh, oh my god. There was an hour every night where people who were on the boat by themselves could go and meet up, like with other gay. single travelers. No, <laughs> they were. These are. This is a different group. Yeah. I'm sure there was overlap. Um, and they had so many like little meetups. It was so yeah. cute. Yeah, I love. I love being on a ship. Sometimes when it's big. Do you get seasick? Oh yeah. I uh, yeah. It's oh, yeah. hard to not. I'm pretty generous with my vomit. What does that mean? It's. <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm like a pigeon with vomit. You I'll go it. anywhere. <laughs> That's how I am. I get so because I get motion sickness so easily. Yeah. Uh, I mean, six out of ten times I drive in a car, I throw up, and every time I do it, when in you someone, drive? Uh, no, when I'm a passenger. Okay, so damn, how'd you get your license? Uh, yeah, I know. I, mean, I throw up almost every single time, like a lot, but I, because I do that, it's like, I, it's gotten so much worse as I've gotten like a little bit older. Like, I don't remember this being an issue too much when I was a kid, but as an adult, it's like I can't even get in a car without throwing up. And whenever I'm with someone, they think, they're like, oh no, we're gonna have to like cancel our plans and go home. Are you okay? You're so sick. I'm like, throwing up to me is like 
what you probably think of as like burping. Yeah. Like, it's like just not a big deal. In fact, burping is much more. This is insane, but to me, I'm more embarrassed to burp than just like fully projectile vomit in front of a bunch of people. Interesting. Isn't that weird? <laughs> <laughs> yes. But <laughs> how much does this cost, Kendall? <laughs> it costs, okay, MV narrative units run between $1 million and $8 million, while a limited number of 12 and 24-year leases start at $500,000. So that's for a full, wait, I'm sorry, Can I got confused. You... Number of 12 to 24-year, 24-year, or is that month? No, 24-year. You're on it for 24 years? On it's the like bo- a house. You live there. You pay it off. Oh, my God. I know. Gam gam, you're gonna pass before that lease. No, is paid. see, that's too long. I was thinking like a year. You can live. No, you can. But this is like long term living. Wow. Okay. Because it's not a rental you own. That makes sense. Okay. Most leases are available either for 24 years or for the life of the vessel, around six years. Early customers are given access to the 12 minus and oh, 12 to 24 year leases. Residents will also be able to rent out their units if they're not on board the ship. Oh, that 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 makes sense. All inclusive living fees come on top of the unit purchase price, starting at around two thousand one hundred a person per month, covering things like food, drinks from the ship's restaurants, bars, laundry, fitness classes, and medical checkups. Oh, actually, if you're very sick, you could save a lot of money. Oh, yes. Well, I think that's their point. It's like it's kind of uh, they're kind of explaining like. Uh, socialism in a way where it's like well everything on the boat well once you've paid yeah pretend you didn't pay anything everything on the <laughs> boat is like we're all at a we all get the same we're thing all we're all able to get access to like these things that are just like our right because we live here yeah do you know what i mean um yeah it's kind of a kind of a stretch to call it socialism but it does <laughs> feel like they're like once you're here no extra payment yeah Today's episode is sponsored by Care Of. Care Of, you already know what it is because I talk about it almost every single week. It is a subscription service that ships high quality, personalized vitamins, supplements, and powders conveniently to your door every single month. Care Of also helps track your wellness progress through their thoughtfully designed companion app. Health should be personal. Can I say it louder for the people in the back? Health should be personal and Care Of helps take the guesswork out of what supplements are best suited for you and your goals, which is so incredible because people are always like, what vitamins should you be taking? What You should be taking vitamins. I'm like, how am I supposed to know what vitamins I'm supposed to be taking? I'm a normal little lady. I am not a doctor. I have no idea what I'm doing. Care Of makes it so much easier. You take a short in-depth quiz about your lifestyle and health goals for a personalized doctor-backed recommendation. Another thing I love about Care Of is that as your needs and goals change, Care Of can help you adjust your routine to match. Their quiz can be retaken at any time to give you updated recommendations, and you can also adjust your habits and routine tracking in the app, which is so great because I feel like sometimes I'll be taking a vitamin that I got seven years ago, and it's like, why do I still take that? Well, because a doctor seven years ago told me I should take it, and it probably is not even relevant or helpful to me anymore, but I still take it. So it's really wonderful that Care Of um, keeps your routine moving and grooving and changing. One of my favorite things about Care Of is how convenient it is. They are given to you in individual packs that are so easy to take on the go and they are sent right to your door so you never run out. For 50% off your first Care Of order, go to TakeCareOf.com and enter code BCC50. For 50% off your first Care Of order, go to TakeCareOf.com and enter code BCC50. That's BCC50. Well, well, well. Guess who has some new underwear they're absolutely obsessed with? Spoiler, it's me, and it's the Fits Everybody collection by Skims. And I just had to tell y'all because it seriously changed how I go about wearing underwear beneath my clothes. Skims is creating the next generation of underwear for everybody. I personally like their boy shorts because, as a lot of you know, I don't wear thongs anymore. I got some wicked rope burn between my cheeks one time and I just can't go back. Not to mention these boy shorts look great under my track suits when I do stand up. So I seriously, seriously recommend them. The Fits Everybody collection of underwear is super lightweight and molds to your body. The buttery soft fabric stretches to twice its size without ever losing shape, meaning you get a perfect fit every time. I wish I would have read that line perfect the fir- the perfect time read that line perfect the first time there we go 
It's available in sizes extra extra small to 4X. Believe the hype, Skims has over 100,000 five-star reviews for a reason. The Fits Everybody collection and more perfect fit essentials are available now at skims.com. Plus, get free shipping on orders over $75. After you place your order, be sure to let them know we sent you. Select podcast in the survey and be sure to select our show in the drop-down menu that follows. That show being the BCC Club. Um, why would you live on a cruise ship, Sarah? Um, so one of the people, I mean, I'm just going to speak about his experience. Austin Wells bought a unit on the MV narrative and plans to work remotely while traveling the world. He says, the thing that most excites me is I don't have to upend my daily routine in order to go see the world. That is true. But so do they go everywhere? They just go wherever the boats go. Right. But so I'm like, are you just going to like the same? Because most cruise ships go to one, like one route. They're like, we're a cruise ship that goes to the Bahamas. We're uh-huh. a cruise ship that goes to Finland. I bet you, if we were to keep reading. It was going to tell us. Yeah. But uh, well states, I'm going from this model where you want to go somewhere, you pack a bag, you get on a flight. We don't know how to travel. So he doesn't want to do that anymore. And the goal is to have a community of residents on this ship. You know, you could also have a community if you just talk to your neighbors in real life. Yeah. But, I mean, I guess being forced in close quarters is very much like a a prison. Um, so, yeah, you could do get close with others. But a lot of people use the cruise ship life to retire. So, Kendall, would you retire on a cruise ship? Me personally? Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. I have too many uh, ethical issues with mobile cruises. homes <laughs> no with cruises yeah well, i guess that's a mobile home <laughs> yes. um i because so i would be like what uh, there's no i should be doing more in my community rather than getting on a boat and fleeing and just running uh around on a boat even though but i think it says a lot about the state would, of our country that it's cheaper and more accessible especially for the elderly to live on a cruise mm-hmm. So I think it's like our country sometimes is so bad that I'm like, it might be better to live on a cruise, but that's just not responsible to me. I would wager to say that old people do more damage on land. And I agree. We mm-hmm. just have to find out if you're allowed to vote if you're on waters during the election. Probably. Yeah, because you're still a citizen. You're yeah. just in international waters. Um, but yeah, according to the cruise lines, International Association, one third of the 28.5 million people who took a cruise in 2018 were over 60 years old, including Kendall. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, really, yeah. the cruise I went on, it was all elderly people. Yeah, it was so. It, well, you know what it was? It was either elderly people or full families, every generation, like a three year old. Her mom, yeah. her mom, and her mom all together on one cruise. Yeah. I, I really, I kept talking to my girlfriend. I was like, there are really families who fucking hate each other, hate each other, yeah. but are like, we're supposed to do things like this. We're yes. supposed to go on a cruise. They're always wearing matching shirts. They look like they wish they were dead, uh-huh. and they are all so unhappy. We went to Hibachi Grill yeah. one of the nights. We're like having fun. The guy's singing. The family across from us, it's too elderly i think grandparents a mom and her daughter who's Mm -hmm. a teenager they are sitting straight faced while this poor hibachi chef is trying so hard to make them laugh he's like squirting fake ketchup in their face they're just so stone cold angry because they're like well i'm stuck on a cruise ship with my three least favorite people on planet earth but we're family so we have to wear these shirts that say smith's cruise yeah 2023 and just be miserable yeah or yep that sounds like it's a, bizarre. This is my family. <laughs> if you, but like, yeah, it's just so. Yeah. I'm like, if you don't like your, fa- so many people are like, we're just going through the motions of what a family is supposed to do. Yes. But none of us like each other. It's like save that money, go on a trip with your friends. Why are you going? Like, I would go on trips with my mom because I love my mom. We get along. We have a great time. Yeah. There are some relatives I have. I would absolutely not be caught dead going on a vacation with yeah. because I know I would have a miserable time. Yeah. Well, it's, opt- it's just so insane to me. Well, it's optics. Like, my mom's a narcissist, so she wants to appear like the best mom ever without doing it. So, like, if she posts pictures of all of her kids on a Disney cruise, everyone's like, oh, you're a great mom. You took your kid. We hated it the entire time. But so a lot of people do retire on cruise ships. Um, you know, like Holland America, for instance, offers a 71-day Grand Africa voyage itinerary stopping in 25 ports in 21 countries along with a grand world voyage uh, visiting 61 ports in 30 countries, totaling 120 to seven days at sea. 
And then, you know, you have the Cruise Web based in Tyson's, Virginia, launched a senior living at sea program that builds bo- <laughs> both builds out retiree specific itineraries and helps client manage their lives back on shore. So there's a bunch of different cruise ships where you could take different routes and they just put all these old people and send them off in the middle of the ocean. Man. And that's the uh, way you should do it. Mm-hmm. I just don't know how you could feel like you. I, I felt like I loved being on a cruise so yeah. much. And I definitely on day seven was like, oh, I could stay here another week. Like, this was really fun, which usually on a vacation, I'm like ready to come home. I really liked being on a cruise. But I did feel completely separate from the entire world and Uh felt very, the only part that I hated was just this like, wow, I'm so behind on work and like uh, every aspect of my life that isn't being on this cruise because it's just so separate. You don't have service. Uh You can't do, you can't go get any of your stuff done, like going and getting like, your regular chores you have to get done. I guess if you fully move on a cruise ship, it's different, but it still feels like you would feel so separate from the world. Yeah. Well, I mean, old people don't know how to work phones, so they don't really need to connect. And then also they're retired, so they don't really need to work. So it sounds like the ideal situation for them. Yeah. I also do feel like, and then we'll get back to reading this. Sorry, I'm going off topic a little bit, but I do feel like in this country, Uh the way we treat old people is very bad Mm -hmm. and it feels like you know in other countries not all countries but in in a lot of other countries they really respect their elders and i'm not i'm not being a weird like republican where i'm like you should let your grandpa call you slurs it's like absolutely not yeah you don't need to respect all some some elders are assholes but i just mean in general general our society is like oh after 60 who cares about you nobody not a single person and i was talking to my girlfriend about this the other day because we were talking about fox news yeah because uh uh their mom works in the uh they're ICU nurse. Yeah. And they were like, without fail, every single person who's over the age of 65 who comes mm-hmm. into the hospital, it doesn't matter what they're like. They could be, have two gay kids that they're obsessed with and wearing a, you know, women run shit shirt. Yeah. They're watching Fox News. Every single one of them. They're all watching yeah. Fox News. And we were just like, why? What is this weird, like, you get to a certain age. I've met a lot of elderly people who, like, when they were younger were Democrats, and but now they watch Fox News. They're obsessed with Fox News. And I was like, I do... Th- we were just talking about how we feel like sometimes n- no... Nothing makes old people feel seen or, like, cared about. Uh-huh. And Fox News, like, talks directly to old people. Yes. You know what I mean? There's a saying that I'm a... I, um, uh... And so just to have them be like, oh, I feel like I'm being spoken to and everyone here is kind of understanding me, mm-hmm. it makes them all like feel comforted by it. What's the saying you were thinking of? Um, if you're not a liberal when you're 25, you have no heart. If you're not a conservative by the time you're 35, you have no brain. Interesting. So, I mean, but that's like an old fashioned thing. So like you get more conservative the older you get, even yeah. if you do have liberal beliefs because, you know, money is king. So, like, I mean... Well, and things change over time, too. So it's, like, things, you know, it's easy to feel... uh, It's easy at 23 to be, like, I uh, believe in all the social stuff that... Because it's, like, yeah, because you were growing up in it. Like, when people bring up pronouns to me, that feels so obvious. And, of course, yes, whatever. Uh But I'm sure when I'm 65, my grandkids are going to come up to me and be, like, this is something you should care about. And I'll be, like, what the fuck? Get away from me. (laughs) You know what I mean? And I hope not. I hope that I'll always be a person who really, like, thinks about it. But I... I just, but it's just as interesting to me because I do feel like the elderly people are running to cruise ships to live on boats because they're like, well, we're not respected or cared about on earth. We're treated like garbage and nothing's accessible. Yeah. But even down to like, uh, my my dad was in a wheelchair since I was six years old. Yeah. So I saw firsthand like nothing is accessible. Absolutely nothing is accept- accessible. Even things that say they're accessible, yeah. even things that promote that they're accessible, it's like, they're not Yeah. for the most part. So even just living on land is hard. Yeah. And I, saw when I was on this cruise that I will not shut up about yeah I um kept telling my partner I was like it's so accessible like a cruise Mm -hmm. is so accessible my dad could have totally totally come on the ship and fully enjoyed being here Mm -hmm. and it's so set up everyone is just living the people who are fully in wheelchairs people who are walking around all acting the exact same there's no like everything is just accessible the doors are wide the buffets are low to the ground it's like everything is just so accessible so I think sometimes I'm like we got to step it up for our old people. Yeah, I think that reflects in like healthcare is for the rich. So yeah. like the rich people go on cruise ships. 
Mm-hmm. So, of course, there's going to be is a lot more accessibility on the cruise ship as opposed to, like, where the common folks stay on land. But, yeah, every, every the world should be definitely, like, more accessible. Because it's so, I mean, the thing is, the things on the cruise ship that are accessible are not expensive. I agree with you. I think, like, mm-hmm. if the more expensive things are, the better they are for everyone, which is unfortunate. Yeah. But it's, like, wide door frames is not more expensive than a small door frame. Yeah. A, uh, having elevators that, like, don't, that are at the, f- where everybody else is entering things, not like, at, oh, you have to walk around yeah. the back and then be carried. Down. Uh, so many, when I was growing up, so many times I have memories of like my friend's dad carrying my dad upstairs yeah. to be able to like do normal things. And it, I think on the cruise ship, I was like, it's just so easy. It's just so easy mm-hmm. to make things accessible. It's yeah. so, it, and obviously it costs money. Everything costs money, but People be, people be upgrading things all the time. Yeah. You got to make things accessible. It's really not that hard. No, it's really not. It's just a, literally the it, it ask someone to spend money on something that's not about them. No. Will it help your residents? Yeah. Will it help your customers? Yeah. Will it give you more customers? Yeah. Is it generally the good thing to do? Yes. Yeah. But it's my money. And that's... Money is king for a lot of people. So I just think it's unfortunate that I, and I'm never, I'm not promoting Fox News in any way, but I think it's something that's important. It's like, well, why are all our grandparents becoming Republicans? Well, we should look at that and be like, this doesn't make sense. They were liberal their whole life, and now this, they're watching this TV show that's insane. Well, I mean, you just said, like, you yourself probably came, became somewhat of a Republican in your hypothetical situation when you stop learning. Yes. Like when you refuse to learn is when you become more conservative. And like, as soon as this is the red flag, the, that you should recognize within yourself, not like Kendall, but like if you start saying like, say like someone comes on TikTok and they're like, oh, look at these like flare leggings and they're like yoga pants. Don't be like, oh my God. I remember like when those were like in style, like you guys are so, that's when you know you've switched to old Mm -hmm. person mode. When you rip... When you don't feel joy when someone else discovers something about... Yes. Oh, I hate when people yeah. are... It's like my biggest pet peeve. I really... Yeah. I, I hate that. So, like, if I... um, I don't want to, like, be like kids these days. I don't... If I hear myself think that, I immediately shut off that thought because I want to be able to continuously learn, continuously feel good for people. So, like, you know, the pronoun... This is... I know that you don't mean this literally, but, like, the... Old people can learn different pronouns. 100%. But their brain shut off. And as they, as soon as they got out of the age that they were considered young yeah. is when they stopped learning. Exactly. And exactly. so, like, even if they were raised in a different time, like, they're stuck in that moment. And that's when, like, the Fox Newsification conservative starts. So, and it's comforting to them. It's yeah. like, oh, I'm being told. Yeah. I'm being told that I, I mean, talk directly to. Yeah. And. Not the type of representation that's um, needed. Yeah. So I, uh, for lack of a better word, representation of yeah. having like all their newscasters are old. Like everyone's old. Yeah. On that. And it's just like, oh, this is for me. This feels like good to me. And then they're hearing all this stuff. And I think they also come from a time when like news was news. It was yeah. not like, oh, you have to pick your news sources really carefully because 90% of news is like fully made up and written by someone that's just like wanting clicks on a website. Mm-hmm. So they're like, well, this is the news. So what th- they're saying is true. Yeah. Which is really scary to think about. It is. But I think it's just something to be talked about that the fact that I think when people turn a certain age, they're panicking about where to retire because they're like, well, I need to go to a place like a cruise where everyone's going to be my age. So I'll be treated with respect Uh where I can because I think it's nice to be like, well, why don't they go out in their neighborhood? But I'm like, I don't know what it's like to be 70. Maybe when you go out in your neighborhood and you're 70, nobody wants to talk to you because they're like, that person's old. Or you try to join a club and they don't respect you because you're old. Or you try to take an improv class, Mm -hmm. but nobody takes you seriously because you're old. You know, and so it's like maybe a cruise ship is the one place you feel like you can be really seen. Yeah, I mean, it's this um, old people and the disabled do share that similarity and that they become invisible. Yeah. And so, like, I mean, think about just any woman who turns, like, 35. Like, everyone's like, oh, her worth is gone, you know? She's now, like, ask any women in their 40s or 50s, like, do you have a, do you feel like you're not seen? And they're like, yeah, I feel like, no one pays me any mind. Like, and so with old people and people who just like society deems not productive members of the workforce, they are not worth acknowledgement or even the time of day. Yeah. And what you were saying about people hating other people's joy just reminded me of this because I was thinking about it the other day. I, I hate people's joy. People's joy. <laughs> yeah, and so no. I think I'm becoming yeah, a Republican. Yeah. No, I hate when people are like, Disney shows suck nowadays. Yeah. Disney movies suck. Yeah. They don't make things like they did in 2002. And I'm like, no, you're an adult. Yeah. You're telling me you think, oh, 
Good Luck Charlie is better than any show that's been. Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, they just don't make shows. That, I agree yeah. they don't make shows like That's So Raven anymore. I really do think that's true. It's it. Yeah. It's and too also, good. She but, tackled serious issues like smoking oh, yeah. and racism. And I was like, they would never do that. And I, they would never do that on Disney anymore. I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't watch it. But I'm always like, or, or I remember someone the other day being like, Disney celebrities. I was talking to my roommate, and he was like, well, they, Disney celebrities aren't f- uh, famous in the way they used to be. And I was like, no, I think they are. I think we are not. I mean, look at Olivia Rodrigo and Sabrina Jenna Carpenter, Ortega. Yeah. Je- yeah, Sabrina Carpenter. It's like, all those people are famous. We just don't know about it until... And then I was talking to my girlfriend. She's like, yeah, before Selena Gomez was out of Wizards of Waverly Place, I didn't know who she was. Yeah. And I'm like, whoa, that's crazy. Because to me, it's like... When I was a kid, I was like, Selena Gomez is the most famous person on planet Earth. But it's like, nobody who's not a child watching Disney Channel knows who she is. Why would they? So I think sometimes people really are so not self-aware where it's like, or they'll go watch a Disney show and they're like, these shows are bad. I'm like, yeah, a lot of them always were. We were seven. Yeah. That's why you thought it was good. Stop shitting on these seven-year-olds watching yeah. their stupid little shows. There were some really bad shows when I was a child, oh, yeah. but I liked them because I was eight years old. Yeah. So I always just think that is so funny where I'm like, there's always going to be some good shows and some bad shows. Mm-hmm. There were some really terrible shows. And it's like the lack of awareness to be like, when I was a kid, kids, people who were 20 years older than me were being like, they just don't make stuff like they did in the 80s, you know? Oh, yeah. This is, oh, God, uh, something I could go on for hours about nostalgia core. Um, like when you start investing too much in nostalgia, that becomes the conservative, like the, remember the past, the past was so much better. And that's where you get like, yeah. Yeah. So like, I mean, it's great to have nostalgia. Like I do miss Vine from time to time, but Mm -hmm. if I dwell on the past, like I'm like, God, the 2000s were so great. Like, God, I wish Vine was back. You get stuck. Yeah. And then that stuckness will like eventually carry over and tumble into a bunch of other thought processes. Totally. Because it's just like things are always changing. Every for Mm -hmm. since the beginning of time, yeah, people have said about the generation after them, oh, they'll never understand this, they'll never get this. They're so this generation, every new generation. It's like, I mean, I don't know what they were saying about teenagers in the 70s, like they were like, this generation is ruining ruining everything. This is like, and these teenagers are fucking feral and have their tits out and are smoking weed. Help me! And it's like, now it's the same thing, and it's always just this want to be. Yeah, this want to be special or feel like what you had was... Mm -hmm. It's like when you leave high school and you immediately are like, wow, that high school looks like ass now that my friend group's gone. And it's like, because you're not in the inner workings of like the social stuff there and and none of it matters to you anymore. So of course it seems like it's worse. Yeah, that's like, oh my God, this is another topic I want to do. When... T- when people who were on a TV show in the past start a podcast about that TV well, show. Well, I was going to say, keep doing that now. The Wizards of Waverly Place one, let it go. Ned's the, Declassified. The Office one, let it go. Like, you have got, I, un, doing occasional interviews, but if I, if I were to start a podcast about my vines or classic vines, it would literally rot half of your guys' brains. Like, you would be like, let it go. Yeah, yeah so like, Ned's, I didn't even know that one. They have one now. <laughs> they have, I mean, I, every, I swear to, it's like a thing now. It's like yeah. everybody's starting these podcasts because, but because they do well too. <laughs> like they do, everyone's starting these damn podcasts, but oh, about, specific, yeah. but I know, yeah. ah, but about their show. Like yeah. it's becoming a really common thing. Where it's like, yeah, I was on this show in the early 2000s. Yeah. Let's make a podcast about it. But it's also hard because they do really well. Because oh, yeah. people are like obsessed with listening to their favorite TV show actors talk about every episode of that TV show. And I'm like, that is so mind blowing to me. But also at the same time, I'm not a huge podcast listener in general. So I have a yeah. hard time understanding why anyone would listen to a podcast. Not our podcast. Our podcast makes no, total yeah. sense why you listen to it. But I just... Uh, it's interesting. No, yeah, because nostalgia core, escapism, people listen to the Wizards of Waverly Place, not like any kids, but it's like people who like love like reminiscing because you like to escape into an easier time. But it wasn't an easier time. You know what you I mean? Were, it's well, like you're just it's always kid. just even like Vine. No, an easier time for you individually. Right, but sometimes yeah. it wasn't even. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. sometimes it was also a hard time. Like I have to remind myself that all the time. Like I've been struggling with my confidence recently. And I remember telling <laughs> my girlfriend, it's okay. So my girlfriend, I was like, I just feel like in 2019, I was so confident. Yeah. Because I remember these moments of feeling confident. But if I really went back to that time, that's yeah. not true. Yeah. I'm just remembering myself as this confident person. But it's like, no, I had insecurities then. I like had an eating disorder then. So yeah. I definitely had insecurities. It's like, what there is, but it feels so easy to be like, back then things were better. Oh, yeah. 
I um yeah, like in college, severe eating disorder. I was less than a hundred pounds wow. in twenty fifteen. And I was like tiny and I I just was like, Oh, I'm like the prettiest I'll ever be and I like was like I ate every other day. Like yeah. I ate a bag of flaming hot Cheetos in the morning, it's and then always I, the flaming hot Cheetos. Yeah, because it would like suppress my appetite because it was spicy, and then the uh, Adderall didn't help. And then also in the afternoon, if I was getting like weird, I couldn't see. I'd get like a chicken quesadilla from Taco Bell, and then that was it. And I like it was horrendous. And I thought, like, I look back, I'm like, my skin was like at a certain point, I lost so much nutrients, I was getting like lesions on my leg. Yeah. And I was like, I wasn't happy. I was just rail thin. Yeah. And so, like, I mean, sure, like, society would probably have deemed me the prettiest I've ever been at that point. Totally. I was sick. No, I mean, yeah. 100%. Yeah, I, yeah, 100%. So it's like, I look back at the time, I'm like, oh, I was so confident. It's like, no, you were not. You're so much more confident now. Yeah. I'm 100 pounds heavier than I was. Yeah. And I feel so much better about my body. Mm -hmm. I never feel the need to, like, skip meals. I'm so much more grounded. So it's like, I've made so many, but it's so easy for me to be like, why can't I get my confidence back like I had when I was 19? It's like, what is that? Yeah. But I think people... uh yeah, do the same things with shows. But they also do the same thing with, like, I mean, you'll see on Facebook all the time. It'll be, like, a edit of these four photos, and it'll be, like, Vine and, like, mm -hmm. an Arizona iced tea. Just, like, things from five years ago. Yeah. And they'll be, like, if you don't get this, you're too young. It's, like, you're 14. <laughs> what do you mean if you don't get this? Yeah. Who, unless you're a baby, yeah. you know what Vine is. Like, there's yeah. no way. So people immediately want to, like... Things aren't the way they used to be back in 2014 YouTube. It's yeah. like, yeah, it had its own special little things. Yeah. There's a lot of shit that happened there. And I guarantee in three years we're going to be like, man, remember the golden days of Thread? It's like, it's always yeah. that. It will never end. Yeah. So living in the past is bad, but living on a cruise ship is it's good. good. <laughs> Hey guys, Sarah here. Have you ever been on the hunt for a new doctor and you ask literally everyone you know for their recommendation? Mom, dad, neighbor, neighbor's dad. You know, a doctor who actually gets you, listens to you, looks you in the eyes, makes you feel super comfortable. And finally, after weeks of searching, you find the one. You know, they're within walking distance. You're someone who forgets to put your uh, gas in your car a lot. So you end up walking a lot of places. So you call the doctor's office and they have an appointment available. Oh my goodness, yes. But then, the receptionist tells you this perfect doctor doesn't take your insurance. Well, stop crying, wipe away the tears, finish the ice cream, and head over to ZocDoc to find and book the doctor who is right for you and takes your insurance. ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top-rated, patient-reviewed doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones who take your insurance, are located near you, and treat almost any condition you're searching for or you currently have. I currently have three doctors through ZocDoc. I have my therapist, my psychiatrist, and my general doctor. Doctor who's been getting me blood pressure medication and stuff for my, my sugar levels. So I, I truly recommend ZocDoc. So go to ZocDoc.com slash BCC and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot -O com slash BCC. ZocDoc.com slash BCC. The average person spends about $214.25 per day, which includes the price of ticket and spending while on board, um, according to data from Cruise Market Watch. I'm going to skip down to the cons Great. of living on a Let's cruise ship because I feel like we've talked about the old people. We've talked about the budgeting. What are the cons of living on a cruise ship, Kendall? Well, first of all, and this is what I think, you gotta, you have to say you're not close to your children or your grandchildren. You're I mean, not. you're and you're not close to anyone. And especially at that point in your life, you're going to miss a lot of yeah. moments. I'm sorry. So it's hard to keep in touch with grandchildren and children, especially because you cannot FaceTime on a cruise unless you're at port. You can't? Um, no, you don't have service. Oh. When you're, so when you're at, and at least on the one cruise I went, so let yeah. me know in the comments if other cruises are different, but I paid for the extra Wi-Fi. I paid like 300 extra dollars to have unlimited like Wi-Fi because I was yeah. going to be working on the trip. I always pay the 25 extra dollars for like a one hour flight on them. I don't care. Oh yeah. It, yeah. Same. Because yeah. I have to work or like I just want to. <laughs> but on this case, I was going to be gone for seven days and yeah. I told my, I told my manager, I was like, don't worry. I'm still working on the cruise. Yeah. 
a nightmare. There's yeah. no, they were like, well, you paid for it, but it doesn't really mean anything because we're at sea, which yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, it's one of those moments where you realize like nature is bigger than man, where it's yeah. like, nobody can make you have service in the middle of sea. That's like yeah. not, that's not possible. So when you're at ports, I would get all my work done because you suddenly have a bunch of service. Yeah. But uh, the Wi-Fi in the cruise is like horrendous and you don't really have service. So I yeah. don't think there's really abilities to like FaceTime people for the most part. Yeah. So you can't even really do that. So it's really hard to keep in touch with people. And mm-hmm. you also might grow weary of frequent stops cruise ships make along with your lack of control over the time spent at port. So sometimes you'll get to a port and they are like, I mean, I went to a port. We were in Victoria, Canada yeah. on this Alaskan cruise. We were there for two hours. Yeah. So we went out, got off the boat, got at dinner and then left. I wouldn't even get off the boat. I honestly, if it had been up to me, that's what we would have done. But I was with some adventurers. God, what is with those people? No, one of my favorite compilation videos when I want to unwind with a, a fake bottle of wine uh, at the end of the day, um, like grape juice, as like, <laughs> people call it. I like to watch people getting left at ports. Oh, yeah. Because they think that the time doesn't apply to them. And I'm like, so inconsiderate. You can, it's like, just there's something so satisfying. You can be late to a fucking reservation, but you cannot be late to a cruise ship leaving. And I just like to watch. <laughs> ah! Because they don't understand. It's like people really yeah. do not understand that people will not wait for you. Yeah. When I was a kid, mm-hmm. if I was running late, okay, we missed it. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, especially when you have siblings, it's like the world does not revolve around. When you have so many siblings, it's oh, yeah. like, well, we have to go to this thing. So either you stay home or you're, and especially being in theater. And I know you talked about this, I think yeah. with like being in the, being in a military family. Did you talk yes. about this? Like the time is so, being on time is so oh, yeah. serious. And as I've gotten older, when people are like, my quirk is that I'm always late. I'm like, that's not funny to me. It's not yeah. really a quirk. It's like really inconsiderate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Obviously everyone, I'm really chill. If someone's late to something, yeah. I'm like, I do not care. But you have friends where they are late to everything, mm-hmm. every single thing, no matter what. Even if you're like, you do, please, I do not. Please, <laughs> I do. I yeah. have friends where I'm like, for the love of God, yeah. don't be, I will, I need you to be on time. Mm-hmm. And I have to lie about when I'm like, we have to be there at this time because mm-hmm. I know they're going to be 20 minutes late. And, it, and I get really spicy. Yeah. All those of people. My- I get very upset because it's very inconsiderate. <laughs> All my friends are militant autistics. And that's what I really enjoy about them is yeah. when I say this time, they are. They're they bad. are, if they show up early, they are waiting with their hand next to the door handle. Yeah. Until it hits that time, and then they're opening. Oh yeah, I love that. And that's what we share in common. But yes, also you who showed up twenty minutes early today, and it made me like, should I show up twenty minutes early? No, it was because my Jordan had a haircut that they had to get to. Oh, my partner did you share had a haircut. Car. Uh, we do share a no, car. No, I, I look confused. Jordan, my partner. My partner, I'm no, sorry. I'm, I'm you know, sorry, I forgot that you shared a car. Uh, yeah, we yeah. share a car. So they I, they don't usually work today, so we didn't even talk. We always are like, we're so good at sharing a car, but then yeah. as we realize it's because I work from home, so like we never it, we never run into oh, issues. Yeah. So whenever one of us has something, we fully forget to talk about it and then yeah. are like, all right, I'm leaving. They're like, wait, I need the car. So they dropped me off and then they went to their haircut and they're going to pick me up after. So that's why I was 20 minutes early. Okay, nice. Um, So you don't have to do that in the future, just so you know show up 20 minutes early oh yeah yeah. unless I you just, want to well <laughs> it's kind of nice i got to you know get all set up be here before me yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> a moment of peace please i'm um, just kidding what are there some cons you know uh with unlimited food and drinks available <laughs> it says it could be hard to maintain your goal weight oh i will say if you're a person who has a goal weight i, I would not recommend going on a cruise i seriously yeah. there's no place i've been when you're on a cruise uh-huh it feel your perception of what is a normal amount of food to eat yeah. is so out the window. Yeah. Um, and I'm pretty much a person who's like, eat whatever you want. But mm-hmm. it literally is like, I would be walking by the cafeteria and I'd be like, let me just grab a slice of pizza as like a, a midday snack. Yeah. Just like a full after lunch. And I'd have like six meals in between each. It's just impossible. To, especially someone who, I, I just feel it's so hard for me to say no to free things uh-huh. so it was like i'd walk by the soft serve bar yeah and i'm not hungry i don't want soft serve but i'd be like oh, okay i'll mm-hmm. just have some soft serve i ate so much on that trip and yeah things that are full meals become like snacks to you yeah it's incredible but i cannot imagine doing that yeah for 24 years oh no i couldn't oh no i'd, I'd lose it i have to eat at three certain points in the day and I don't really like to snack because I've gotten a handle on my blood sugar Oh yeah, and blood pressure and I can only take my medication three points in the day so I can't spike it in between. Oh yeah. So if I'm going to eat some uh, sweet stuff, it has to be at that time. Oh yeah. So what I, time is it? I got to save up uh, seven. seven. I got to save my cravings till seven. Yeah. That's what I should do too. Um, <laughs> Get there's a your lot blood of, sugar <laughs> under control. I mean, I, something's going on. Yeah. 
You also may have to purchase private health insurance for travel. Mm -hmm. Medicare coverage is limited outside the United States and won't pay for health care services provided when the ship is more than six hours away from a U.S. port. Oh, my God. If you have, like, a medical emergency, like, and you're just six hours and 30 minutes away. Yeah. That is crazy. You know what really um, blows my load is, like— Tell me, Sarah. I don't understand. If there is—I know there's, like, a brig on a ship. Is like a, is there— I have no fucking idea what that is. If you get arrested on a ship. Oh, there's a place they take you, yes. Yeah, like, is—how big is the jail? They talk about this somewhere in here. There's also, I think, a, a separate—there's, hmm. like, a room for serious crimes— Ah, murder. I'm surprised more crimes don't happen on cruise ships. Because the response in here is kind of like, well, it doesn't really often happen. People are blackout drunk on these. Yeah. I mean, I that was my number one, I mean, probably gripe with the cruise is people just act feral. There wasn't enough crime. There was not enough crime. (laughs) Not enough violent crime. No, people are just so drunk. Because you are like, all you can do on a cruise, and this is what I loved about it, when you're not at a port, all you can do is hang out. There's nothing to do. You really can't like... Especially on the Alaskan cruise because you can't really swim or tan because it's cold as yeah. fuck because it's in Alaska. And so you just sit around with your friends and drink and eat food and it's a delight. But it makes it to where it's like I can order a uh, I can order a, a, a mudslide at 7 a.m. Uh-huh. I mean, nuts. Like yeah. crazy, feral, <laughs> yes. just disturbing people. And people are just so, so drunk. Mm-hmm. And you feel like, especially because you just kind of are walking, but everything just feels so out of the ordinary anyways that you're, yeah. you're what you would map onto your normal life, you just throw away. You're like, I can do whatever I want on a cruise. Yeah. So it's scary. And I was on a cruise with a bunch of old people. I yeah. can't even imagine people on like a carnival cruise or a princess cruise. I can't even imagine how drunk people get. Oh, they, they, that's brawling territory. I feel like you. Would, I, if I was going to fight someone ever, it'd be on a carnival cruise. Yeah. Like I would save my, like, yeah. There's um, also some cruise ship influencers um, like, you know, they share advice, recommendations, news, vlogs centered around cruising, like Captain Kate McHugh on TikTok. <laughs> we got ship facts on TikTok. Cuisine Susie. Wow. And so it's just like, you know, um, best practices for living. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they also have blogs dedicated to cruising, like Cruise Hive, Cruise Lee, Cruise Maven, Avid Cruiser. <laughs> ah! And they got Booze Cruiser. Um, <laughs> but yeah. There are um, different cruise lines, and I know you went on Alaska cruises, but what were your yeah. other options? I'm not in charge of that. I'm, oh, didn't I? Uh, uh, my Jordan booked. No, I booked it. Well, it was on my credit card, but I, <laughs> I said, I. We actually, our friend Andrew came over with like a PowerPoint. It was like, here's why we should go on an Alaskan cruise. And we all sat on the couch and like booked it together, but it was very confusing to me uh-huh. because it's confusing to book a cruise. You like- You have to do excursions too. Excursions and they make everything difficult. It, this is how they set it up. They're like, look, it's a cheap cruise. Every time you make any decision, we add $500 onto the bill. You know what yeah. I mean? So it becomes like not a cheap Norwegian cruise line. That's the one I did. Oh, Norwegian. Okay. Princess cruises, celebrity cruises, which is so funny. I was telling my girlfriend about this this morning. They were like, oh, I thought that was a cruise you go on to meet celebrities. And I was like, the thought of that being a cruise is so funny. I don't think any actual celebrity would go on something called a celebrity cruise unless they're like dog the bounty hunter. I mean, literally, I was like the the group of celebrities that would agree to do that would be like the most E-list celebrities that like yeah. are. It would be like uh Tiger King yeah. would be like the <laughs> yes, type of celebrity yes, yeah. on that. They would be insane. But celebrity cruises, it's like more trendy, more expensive. It provides a more gourmet food and luxury experience like wine tasting, wellness classes, and glass blowing classes. Mm-hmm. And the entire staff takes pictures of you constantly. <laughs> yeah. Is that true? <laughs> no, no. It's just like paparazzi. <laughs> oh, yeah. They make you feel like a celebrity. I do feel like I'm the exact person because my instinct is like, what a dumb name for a cruise. Like, why would you? You think people are just going to sign up for that because you put the word celebrity? And I'm like, yeah. I'm the exact person that would sign up for that to be like, celebrity? Hmm, I want to be a celebrity. Kate I'll go Winslet. on this cruise. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait, I want to. Uh, I just realized that Mia added being left at ports at the bottom. Yeah, pier runners. They're they call them. <laughs> they're called pier runners. A cruise passengers who's who lo- uh, lose track of time while at port. They're forced to run down the pier in order to catch this ship before it leaves. I think that they should equip everyone who like stands on the side of the ship with like paintball guns to shoot, and, <laughs> and you get like a discount on dinner <laughs> if you can get the pier runner. Oh my god, <laughs> it's so insane because they make it so easy. They're yeah. like, you get off here, mm-hmm. you're immediately exactly where you need to be. Like yeah. it was so organized. I was so shocked at how organized cruises were. They're more organized than anything I've ever seen in my entire life. 
Um, and they make it so easy. So for you to miss your boat, you have to be just fully disregarding the time yeah. and being like, no, I don't want to do that. I would be like, hey, so just for any passenger, if you have no, like, no sense of time management, I would advise staying on the ship because this is a two hour. Yeah. Like you just and then so there's like viral videos of people like running on the dock, um, like a woman sparked debate, uh, debate on TikTok after a now viral video, a celebrity cruise ship left her behind. And um, someone posted a video of it, and in a text overlay, she said, y'all, my boat left me, what the fuck, celebrity cruises, and then what in the fuck am I supposed to do? I'm literally stuck on this island. Yeah, that. so this is what you should do. It's so funny, too, because I am like, ma'am, that is not the end of that. Like, yeah. you're not just stuck on the island. They have things set up where yeah. they're like, you have to now fly home, or you have to... Uh, Meet you know, them at the next port. Meet them at the next port. You're not yeah. just, they're not just like, oh, you live here now. Like, that's what happens. <laughs> Welcome they, to Jamaica. <laughs> they have to make it that way because if they were just like, because I was thinking about this, I was like, oh, maybe that you have to get on the next boat. But then that would be like so encouraging you to be like, oh, I could just stay in this port for three days yeah. and then enjoy this port more, get back on the boat on another boat. And cont- it's like they have well, to all make your it- stuff is still on the original boat. No, but they take it off. Oh. I was reading. They like take off all your stuff. When you miss your, boat they have someone take all your stuff out and put it like with the people down there so you have all your stuff so then you can fly home or meet them in the next port but like so it's like they have to make it a bad scenario for you if you miss it or people just miss it all the time oh yeah i love that i also was wondering should we do a full episode on the poop ship poop ship they talk about it down here Oh, I'm going to do bringing alcohol. The poop cruise. The poop cruise. Yeah. I think we could do a full episode on that, to be honest. I was researching it today, and it is um, insane. Honestly, guys, I think we're going to do a part two to uh, this cruise ship, because we got more stuff to talk about. And there's, like, you know, from bringing alcohol onto a cruise. Yeah, we're just so, but I think we're going to do a little continuation of this. But in the meantime. And in that one, we can talk about the poop cruise. Exactly, the poop cruise. And we're not talking about that thing that happened in <laughs> Chicago with that band. <laughs> My favorite thing about cruises is that so many old people are wearing shirts that say cruiser since like 1986, yeah. which is a gay thing. Oh, yeah. But they're like, this is because I cruise a lot. And like all of these old Republicans are wearing shirts that say they're cruisers. And it really makes me laugh. Exactly. They're kids. They have their four year olds in shirts that say cruiser since 2017. It's like, yeah. oh, my God, take that off of them. You're, it's so inappropriate. But um, we are actually interviewing someone who... Remind me again, what was their affiliation? This is really, I I know them through a, my aunt. Yeah, she inter- they're a friend of hers. They've been cruising, living on a cruise ship, just as we're talking about for twenty years. Okay, they're incredibly seasick all the time. They've oh. been they're hospitalized constantly. That's a lot. Um, but they love cruises. They're always like, give it up, give it up, Andy, give uh-huh. it up. All right. Well, I'm gonna talk to them while Kendall, uh, picks her girlfriend up from the hair appointment. <laughs> But we will be right back. (laughs) Bye. And we're back. This is Andy, Andy, last name? Oh, gosh. Andy, last name? Hi. No, last name, just Andy. Oh, wow. That is must be hard on your driver's license. How how are you doing, Andy? I'm good. I'm sorry I'm late. I was really late. I was vomiting for hours downstairs in your bathroom. Oh, my God. That is, um, yeah. I'm still getting my sea legs. Oh, you mean your land legs? Uh, yeah, my land legs. I still get my land legs, getting used to being on land. But also, I need to get my sea legs because whenever I'm in the sea, too, I start, I get, I throw up a lot, too. Oh, wow. That must be hard as a, oh, gosh. Are you, are you holding something? Are you No, okay? just, no, just don't feel good. Okay. So, how long have you been cruising, Andy? 20 years. Best 20 years of my life. You've I been, love cruising. Your esophagus must be almost. Oh, it doesn't exist. Oh. It's, it's <laughs> a uh, it's a it's a fake one they put in made of plastic. Oh my yeah, it's like a garden hose. Yeah, exactly. Just, the acid disintegrates. Still works just as good. Oh my god. Well, uh, you've been cruising for twenty years. Twenty years. And the yet- best twenty years of my life. I love cruising. It just makes it's who I am. The uh-huh. second I got on one of those boats, I said I'm never leaving, and I never did. Oh my god. Do you have like teeth in the back of your mouth? Still? Uh, not many. Okay, I mean... Not many. Stomach? I go to the dentist, I have a couple veneers. Why? A stomach acid will destroy your... Yeah, it did, did, did a number. Yeah? It did okay. a number. I just get so seasick, Sarah. I feel that. I, I mean... vomit constantly on this boat. 
Oh, <laughs> have you? I mean, so have you met any friends on the cruise? There's one woman, Janelle. Uh huh. She's a good friend of mine. She's the nurse on the boat. Uh huh. I see her every morning. Usually, they have to give me an IV. Uh huh. And then at nights, I go and she bathes me in Dramamine. <laughs> yes. Take a long bath in Dramamine. Oh my gosh. That's a- so her and I have gotten really close. She's a friend of mine. Uh-huh. We talk a lot. Besides her, I don't see many other people. Usually I'm in quarantine, so I'm not allowed to see other people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, what are some of your favorite activities to do on the boat? I love, I love to lay in my bedroom and close my eyes and try not to shit myself, Sarah. That's it's, the main thing I do. It's just coming out of all ends. It's coming out of all ends. The sea does it to me, I'll tell you. It really does a number on me. But I love to sit. You know, they have five movies when you're on a cruise. They have five movies that you're able to rent. Uh-huh. Freaky Friday. Yep. The new Nope movie. Have you seen that? That's a new one. Nope. Well, they have that on there. Uh, a couple good movies like that. So I watch Freaky Friday usually, and I just close my eyes and listen to it. Uh-huh. How do you get nutrients in your body? Nutrient. Well, I'm incredibly dehydrated. Usually, the uh, usually the IVs help. Yeah. I, oh usually wow. The IVs. I get room service sometimes, but I'm not able to eat. Well, none of it stays down. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's crazy. Um. Uh, so, uh, what are some of? Uh, that's your favorite activity, laying down. It's the only one I've done. <laughs> I haven't done anything else besides for that. I've years? never been twenty years. I've only ever really laid down in the room. I'm unable to. If I stand up for too long, I start vomiting. The seasickness is just really gets me. Oh, wow. So what's been your favorite port you've stopped at? I don't usually even want to leave the, the boat. Yeah. I love it so much. Uh-huh. I usually just stay on during the ports. People say, oh, we're in Australia. I'd rather just stay on this beautiful boat. I love cruising. <laughs> so you're, you're paying to stay in a room and throw up? <laughs> because I love the boat. I love to cruise. Yeah. It's not just a room. It's a room on a cruise. I love cruises. I love being on it. It's just my passion. Uh-huh. So whenever we get to ports, occasionally... Occasionally, I'll be taken out on a gurney <laughs> to a hospital if I need more medical help. Do you notice? But that's by force. <laughs> I usually say, leave me here. I love this cruise ship. Do you notice any difference with the vomiting when you go on land? Um, usually, I'm blacked out by that point. Okay. If they've dragged me off the cruise ship, it's not good. Yeah. It's not good. The vomiting is less... Uh, one time I was awake for it. It was more contained. Uh huh. Usually I'm wobbling around so much on the ship uh-huh. because it's on water that it's just all over my room. Yeah. The poor lady on my floor who cleans, she hates my guts. Yeah. She says every day, Andy, why don't you get off this damn ship? Uh-huh. Say over my dead body. And yeah. she says, that's probably closer than you think. Nah, sometime soon. Um, so how long are you planning on being a cruiser? T- as long as they'll let me. Are you a homosexual? No. Okay. I'm um, single. You're single? Uh-huh. Have you uh, asked Janelle looking. for her number? I'm not gay. Janelle is a woman? Yes, and so am I. Oh, Andy. I thought you were a man. Short for Andrea. Oh, I thought it was Andrew. No, Andrea. But I go by Andy. Oh, Andy. Not gay. I don't know. I thought I could explore my sexuality a little more on the boat, but I haven't been able to yet. Yeah. I'm hoping maybe it happens in the future. You haven't explored the boat. No, not at all. I don't know where anything is. Oh. I just get so sick. I just love cruising, though. I seriously do. I haven't talked to any of my friends or family in years. You're the first person I've seen on land in years besides a doctor. <laughs> but I just love the cruise. I don't want to leave it. That's not the first time I've heard that. But uh, thank you so much, Andy, for being on. How, um, how are you feeling right now? Uh, I'm starting to feel a little bit better. I've been off the boat for a couple hours. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel sickness because I miss the boat so much. Yes. So I'm going to try to get on that pretty quick. But I finally, this is the longest I've gone without throwing up in years. <laughs> well, one day at a time. Thank I you, love cruising. <laughs> I love cruising. Thank you, Andy, for being on. Of course, thank you for having me. No problem. And we will talk to you guys next week. Well, there you go. How was that? That was shocking. Um, I don't even know how they, whatever. Uh, but thank you, guys. This has been part one of our cruise series. I know. Part two will consist of talking more about how to bring alcohol on cruises? Well, you're not supposed to do it, so we're not going to give you tips. But mm-hmm. well, we have a couple, and uh, the poop cruise, which uh, let's just say I watched a short documentary on it this morning, and uh, it sounds terrible. <laughs> I was going to say it's fascinating. It's fascinating. But, but uh, make sure to like and subscribe on our YouTube. Uh, we are the BCC Club. Follow us on P- Apple Podcasts, Spotify, any place to get your podcasts. Five stars. Thank you guys so much for listening or watching. And if you've been on a cruise, tell us which one in the comments below, and we might just 
comment. And if you were on the poop cruise, let us know. We'll have you on as a guest. Mm -hmm. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.